and killed them, and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that the champion was dead, they fled. My sermon title was called, I Am a Giant Killer. Uh -huh. Take your name and say, neighbor. Neighbor. I am, I am a, giant a giant killer. You may be seated in the presence of God. On October 9, 2013, I took my Children's Studies Conflict Exam. This is an examination that teachers take here in Texas to be certified mm -hmm. as a teacher. Yes, Six days later, I received my results and stated, not passed. Mm -hmm. At this point, I was angry, frustrated, and devastated. Mm -hmm. I missed the job opportunity because I did not pass this exam. I had no one to blame but myself. Mm -hmm. I did not put the necessary hours needed to study. I was working full time. I was in grad school full time. The week of my exam was midterm weeks, as so I was focused on my midterms. All these variables contributed to me not passing this exam. Right. Out of fear and apathy, I did not confront this giant until four years later. Ooh. This time, when I faced this giant, I went hard in the pain. Ooh. I became a grinder. I studied every opportunity possible. Mm -hmm. Since my new job required me to be certified, I made no excuses, only adjustments. Yes. I received notice this past Tuesday that I passed my exam. Amen. With flying colors. I was willing to not only confront the giant, but kill it. All right. I know I'm not alone with this. We all face giants in our lives. Right. So you may be wondering, what are the giants that we face? Mm. The giant of financial crisis, such as debt. Yeah. The giant of relationship. Yeah. Parental conflicts, yeah. spousal conflicts, mm -hmm. yeah. wayward children, right. toxic friends, bad coworkers, yeah. the giant of our workplace. We may feel unhappy or unfulfilled at our jobs. The giant of fear, fear of success, fear of failure, mm -hmm. fear of rejection. Yeah. The giant of lust, right. pride, or envy. Mm. The giant of resentment, bitterness, hopelessness, Jealousy, guilt, shame, worry, doubt, discouragement, loneliness, depression, wow. the giant of drugs, alcohol, addiction, low self-esteem. Nevertheless, we all face giants. But I'm here to declare to you on this morning that you are a giant killer. Amen. Amen. Let's see what God has to say about being a giant killer. Hmm. Let's discover what he teaches us in our passage today. And our pastor today, we have a familiar story. We have David, the shepherd boy. And we have Goliath, the Philistine warrior. Let's read 1 Samuel chapter 4, chapter 17, 4 through 8. And we're going to find out some stuff about Goliath. 1 Samuel chapter 17, 4 through 8. And it reads, And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistine named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubic and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was along with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had a bronze armor on his legs, and a brown javelin between his soldiers, between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels, and a shield bearer went before him. Then he stood and cried out to the arms of Israel, and the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line for, up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And you, the servants of Saul, choose a man for yourself and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Goliath, in this particular verses, he was nine feet tall, hmm. about nine inches. His armor weighed about 126 pounds. Mm -hmm. He was a massive giant yes. who spent 40 days, night and day, issuing a challenge to any soldier from the Israelites' army to fight him. In addition, he was taunting and he was mocking the true and living God. Right. And in and his challenge, he stated that the loser of the battle, the nation will be a servant to the women. So on the outside looking in, 
We would think that David had no chance. However, he had God on his side. Yes. In verse 26, let's read that. And let's see what David says when he comes on the scene. Verse 26 says, Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills these who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Mm -hmm. David recognized that the life was uncircumcised. To be uncircumcised represented an unbelief and disobedience to the covenant of God. Mm -hmm. In other words, David knew that the life had no relationship with God. Right. Yeah. No relationship with the true and living God. So the first thing that David did was confront the giant. Yeah. Say it with me, confront it. Confront it. When we read the passage, the Israelites, they ignored the giant. Saul and the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. They were too afraid to confront this giant. Mm -hmm. Someone once said that an unconfronted issue is still an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. When David gets on the scene, he has a conversation with his brother Eliab. In verse 28, let's read verse 28. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, Why did you come down here? And whom, and with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart. For you have come down to see the battle. One of my friends once said that people remember you based on how they last saw you. Yeah, yeah. In David's brother's eyes, he was just a shepherd boy. Yeah. He was not even qualified to even be there. But it is God who qualifies. Amen. Amen. God often calls the unqualified to accomplish his will. Amen. I love David's response to his brother in verse 29. And David said, what have I done? Is there not a cause? In essence, what David was saying if no one else will fight, I will go and fight the enemy of the Lord's people. Yeah. He had the courage to face the giant. Mm -hmm. This may mean that you and I may have to go outside of our comfort zone and ignore the haters, the doubters, and the naysayers to mm -hmm. accomplish our God-given destiny. Yeah. Yeah. Let me say that again. Yeah. This may mean that we may have to go outside of our comfort zone and ignore the haters, the doubters, and the naysayers to accomplish our God-given destiny. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that I found interesting about this passage is that David knew who he was. Huh. Let's look at verses 38 to 40. So Saul clothed David with his armor and put a brown helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk. For he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, in a pouch where he had, and with a sling in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. So in this particular passage, we see that Saul attempted to give him David his armor. Yeah. But the problem with the armor was too heavy, it didn't really fit for David, it was too big. So David knew that he had to be himself. Yeah. This lets us know that we have to be ourselves. Yeah. God has uniquely crafted you to be an original. Yes. Be yourself. Yes. Turn to your neighbor, neighbor. neighbor. Be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. Mm -hmm. If God has called you to be a doctor, be the best. Yes. If He has called you to be a lawyer, be the best. Yes. If He has called you to be a teacher, be the best. If He has called you to be a preacher, be the best. Mm -hmm. If He has called you to be a hairstylist, be the best. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968 speech, the day before his assassination, spoke to some sanitation workers, and he told them to be the best sanitation workers possible. Amen. So be yourself and not a cheap copycat. Yeah. A lot of individuals in this society want to be like so and so, the next yeah. so and so. Yeah. Be who you are. God yes. has uniquely yes. crafted you to be who you are. Yes. You're unique. You have a fingerprint that makes you unique. Yes. The last thing I noticed about David is that he went into battle with a slingshot and five smooth stones. Mm -hmm. Theologians all throughout the centuries are debating the reasoning for five smooth stones. Some say he was prepared just in case he missed. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Others say he didn't really trust God. Mm-hmm. Others say that he was prepared just in case David's brothers, he had four brothers, he might have, they might have wanted to get revenge yeah. or extract revenge. Right. Nevertheless, David used what he had. Mm-hmm. This lets us know that we have to use what we have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Once you find out who you are, use what you have. Amen. Start somewhere. Yeah. Start one step at a time. Yes. One stride at a time. Yeah. I went into my life. When I was into this whole fitness program, I started one day at a time. Mm-hmm. I wasn't trying to be the next Arnold Schwarzenegger over yeah. there. <laughs> That make no sense. Yeah. I started one day at a time, one stride at a time, and I was able to get in shape and be fit. Mm-hmm. What I liked about David, he became a giant killer because he confronted the giant, yes. he remembered who he was, yes. and he used what he had. Yeah. So it's not enough just to study the Bible. We must put it into practice. You may come across giants in your life. Mm-hmm. So I challenge you to have a cause. Mm-hmm. In other words, have a why. Yeah. Why are you fighting your giant? Mm. Oh. Is it for you? Mm. Is it for your spouse? Mm. Is it for your children? Yeah. Many times our struggles right. are not about us. Mm. It's about someone else. Amen. They need to see you get free. Yeah. When you get free, they get free. They need, they need to see your testimony. Yes. When we get free and conquer our giants, our families get free. Our communities get free. Our state get free. Our nation get free. We are in this together. Yes, we are. And we can help each other face our giants. Yes. To conclude, one of my favorite boxing dishes is a man named Muhammad Ali. He's known for several catchphrases. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Mm-hmm. His, head, his hands can't hit what his eyes can't see. Mm-hmm. Now you see me, now you don't. Yeah. Just think he will, but I know he won't. Mm-hmm. Or, I wrestle with alligators, I tussle with a whale, I learn handcuff, handcuff lightning and throw thunder in jail. Yeah. Or, if you dream of beating me, you better wake up and apologize. <laughs> Well, he had a giant to face in 1974. His giant name was George Foreman. George Foreman was found the best fighter at that time. He was young, he was strong, and he was fast. He defeated the other two gentlemen that Muhammad Ali at that time got defeated by. Joe Foreman, Joe Fraser, excuse me, and Ken Norton. Muhammad Ali and Joe Foreman fought in a historical match called the Rumble in the Jungle. In the, seven, the first seven rounds, Ali leaned on the ropes and cover up, letting Foreman punch him in the arms and body. As a result, Foreman spent all his energy throwing all the punches that did not really hit him. Mm-hmm. Foreman grew tired in the eighth mm-hmm. round. Mm-hmm. Ali followed up with a five-punch five combination that caused Foreman to stumble in the canvas. Foreman did not get up, well, he actually did get up at the count of nine, but the, ref, but the referee, Zach Clayton, stopped about with two seconds remaining in the round. On that day, Muhammad Ali, at the age of 32, became a giant killer against all odds, mm-hmm. defeating a younger and stronger foreman. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, we too need to ask ourselves, are we going to cower down in fear and defeat? Mm-hmm. Or are we going to face our giant mm-hmm. and become a giant killer? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The doors of the church are open. Yes, sir.